The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Doing great. Right. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Vernon Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 7-6-6-4-8. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan and welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. To recover our natural health and regain our rights and our freedoms. Good morning, I'm Paige Clark. That's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg. Clear skies and 78 degrees. I like uh, the little touch of fall. A little fall is in the air, that's for sure. Make sure to subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. This is news you can use in your inbox that kind of follows our show and keeps you up to date on the latest stuff. Yeah, in fact, uh, we have issue 19 coming out today, so look for that. And uh, of course, this follows our show. It's only $10 a month. It's $5 for each issue. And remind you also, please pick up our Primal Edge, our one shot wonder, over 310 cell ready liquid ingredients. So it's easy to take and it keeps the good stuff in. And the bad stuff out with nature's miracle molecule, fulvic and humic acid. That's right. So, Nico. Yes. You know, last show we were talking a lot about how there seems to be such a push to move us towards plant-based diet. Yeah, that's that's the agenda, seems and, like. And, you know, whether or not that's for our better health or for the environment, there's people on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. So let's dig into this article. And I think this is really significant because it was in the New York Times. It's a recently released study that reveals scientists have said eating less red meat may be bad advice. And the evidence is uh, too weak to justify telling in individuals to eat less beef and pork, according to new research. The findings erode public trust. And for years, public officials have been urging Americans to limit consumption of red meat and processed meats. Notice they put those two together. Yeah, and that's a very interesting part of it because they always put the red meat and the processed meats, which is not the same. And all processed meat is not the same either. I mean, you can take a nice chunk of beef and make some hamburger out of it. That's a process. Right, or even sausage as people in Europe, in, in your part yeah. of the world where you came from, Definitely. what they do. This is not necessarily the same thing as these. What we're talking about when we say processed meat, I think this is what they mean. This is what I would mean is that you're filling it with a bunch of fillers. Which might be grain-based. Right. You're using Chemicals. really low-grade meats, the right. throwaway kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is the way you get rid of it and you subsidize your... That's the kind of meat we're talking about. And typically, we think about hot dogs and things like that. But we don't necessarily think about the nice sausages that come from Poland or come from Holland, Germany, or it Italy. From grass-fed animals. Yeah, they, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a distinction, and they always lump those two together because that's the... And that kind confuses of the, people. Yeah, and that's the red button kind of thing. But on Monday, this week, right hot off the press, in a remarkable turnabout, an international collaboration of researchers produced a series of analyses that concluded that the advice, which was a bedrock of all this new dietary advice, is not backed by good science. It's foul science. And it kind of makes sense, folks, when you think about it. Uh, primal man was not able to toss up a Asian salad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. That's for sure. Well, the certainty of evidence about these redux, uh, reduced reductions are very low. Or, uh -huh. or low to very low, they say. The studies are, are among the largest nutrition evaluations ever attempted and may influence future dietary recommendations. I doubt that because the agenda really is pushing the other way. Well, and, and, and let's take a look at it. If we steer people away from animal-based proteins as foods, then they're going to go down the freezer aisle and there's going to be little packs of linguine and with Alfredo sauce and maybe with some happy couple little sprigs of broccoli. It's a so lot it's easier like to fix. You just put it in a pan and it's done uh -huh. in a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, already there have been fierce criticism by public health researchers. The, and who uh, would they be? Yeah, the Heart, American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society, Harvard, Harvard. Uh -huh. uh, the Chan School of Public Health and other groups uh, have savagely savaged the findings. 
and the journals that publish it. You know, they always go after the messenger instead of digging into the science of the thing. And I think that's really great. Harvard actually warned the conclusions harm the credibility of nutrition science and erode public trust in scientific research. Well, as we've already stated on this show, uh, the um, chief editor of the New England Journal of Medicine said that research, medical research, can no longer be studied because there's, there's and trusted because of the lobbyists and so forth, paid for research. Right. Remember that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Red meat used to be a symbol of high social class, but that's changing. Dr. Frank Hugh, he's the chairman of the nutrition department at Harvard, uh, Chan School of Public Health. Today, uh, the more highly educated Americans are eating less meat uh, than they, they usually eat, they're saying. And but, this is because of the propaganda, I believe. Right? And this is about, like you said, trying to make it cool to not be a meat eater, right. when in fact, if you go back and you watch old movies that were set in medieval times, the king is eating the deer, mm -hmm. and the peasants are eating little porridge, mm -hmm. right? From the from the rice or the millet right. or the yeah. You know, yeah, just little scraps. Well, and they're scraps farmers. Of bread. Yeah, they're not hunters. They they can't. Uh, but hunt, I think hunting it was, was, again, remember that hunting that was, was that divide. Yeah, but the, the hunting was the aristocracy. Correct. You, you know, would. so you had to be a certain uh, level of a human being to uh, even allow to hunt, otherwise you were the outlaw. So the only thing you could do was farm. Mm -hmm. And farming, of course, was important too, because during hard times, the king also needed that. And as they went on, the king was also making bread and cake and because they were gluttonous. And becoming and they, gluttonous. Yeah, and exactly. The picture, so they, yeah. they were doing both. Right. But well, I, I guarantee it wasn't the great meat he was eating. It was probably the, all the other things that he was eating, too, and not having any exercise there, playing games and doing all kinds of things in, in the castle. So here goes the propaganda, folks. The prospect of a renewed appetite for red meat also runs counter to two other important trends. One is growing awareness of the environmental deg degradation caused by livestock production, livestock production as we do it, as not the way we should be doing it, right? right. Letting yeah, them free range. Because there's plenty of, we talked about this on our last show, there's mm -hmm. plenty of people who have the idea of simulating what our uh, ancestors did in the wild. So we no longer have the wild, but there are ways of doing it. Uh, and of course, we have people here in this country doing that too. And number two, the long st standing concern about the welfare of animals employed in industrial farming, and no one can agree that treating animals the way they are is, is a sound practice. Yeah, if you, if you want a real education, you visit sites uh, that uh, have these little farms, like uh, the White Orchard uh, Orchard, uh, which is up in uh, Georgia. The white pastures. White pastures, that's mm -hmm. the one. Good slip of the tongue there. But these are great people, and they send me newsletters all the time inviting me up to see their place because mm -hmm. uh, they're open to the public. You can take a tour. You can watch the slaughtering. You can uh, stay in one of their beds and breakfast, and they have uh, lunch and dinner, and I think breakfast just about every single day. So mm -hmm. it's a, that's the type of experience you want to experience because that'll a teach you. A reminder of where our food yeah, comes from, exactly. being connected. Yeah. Uh, John, thank you, says uh, Paige and Nico, thank you so much for speaking some truth of our food supply. Good to keep some of us grounded. Yeah. It's so true, and if you stop and think about it, many of our kids today don't even really know where it comes from. It comes yeah. from, our, you know, I think it's so important um, with my grandkids and stuff, I really want them to have, like, farm trips. I want them to understand the way, you know, not the farm. I want them to learn about hunting. I have my nephew that... Hunts his family's food. Yeah. I'm really proud of it. That's for sure. Stick around, folks. We'll be, be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 welcome back we're having some great comments in the chat room and um you know, John said, guiding us humans like a herd of sheep is quite easy. Just make the desired behavior fashionable. And that's the bingo. That's what Nico and I are trying to suggest. Yeah, that yes. much of what we're reading is is to guide us and make us, I mean, the media, there's so much fake news and, and, and molding of our of what our thoughts yeah, are. Yeah, he brings up the uh, great movie Soylent Green, which was in 1973, kind of blew my mind mm -hmm. uh, at the end there when Charlton Heston realized that uh, the retirement plan was the food. They were they were going to be the food. Yeah, that's pretty, that, yeah. I just got goosebumps over that. I'm gonna, <laughs> Soylent Green, as a must-see movie, it was made in 1973, but you know, future proves past. <laughs> it's a great movie. I haven't seen it. I don't want to blow the end, end for you, but uh, pretty much. It's, yeah, we uh, live in yeah. an upside down world. Yeah. Uh, as he says, fact is fiction and fiction is fact. That is so true. So let's go to this next article. Yeah, how to eat in a way that speaks to your genes. Have you ever wondered uh, what we eat and how it affects our genes? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about this. And uh, a registered dietitian, Amanda Archibald, uh, has a new book, The Genomic Kitchen, Your Guide to Understanding and Using the Food, Gene Connections for a Lifetime of Health. And our diets are crucial for our health and for our DNA. Remember, our DNA is the blueprint. It's the plan. But what we do is the epigenetics or above the genes. How that, how that blueprint is employed determines on how we, what we yeah. drink, eat, sleep, move, think. Yeah, genomic medicine offers a new approach to personalizing health care. Mm -hmm. One of uh, uses unique gene blueprint as a powerful insight to see how your genes respond to nutrients, uh, as well as exercise and life stressors and, of course, uh, environmental pollutions and, of course, the medications and things like that. I think one of the ways you could look at it is you just take a sample of the bugs in your intestines and in your stomach. I think that's going to be a huge area. You know, when we're talking about, re you know, maybe a sick person getting an inoculation of someone else's mm -hmm. flora via mm -hmm. a stool sample. Yeah. I think, as we know, the bacteria are 10 times more prolific in our body than our own cells. Yeah. We're more bacteria than we are 
us. That's what makes it's the pretty digestion. Wild, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the whole <laughs> yeah. process is really neat. Uh, this uh, culinary uh, genomics is uh, a term I devised. The author says to describe the union of genomic science, nutrition science, and food science. How food uh, responds to growing, storing, and cooking techniques. And this is really important because this is what our ancestors found out when times got tough. Somehow they figured out that fermenting foods, uh, cooking them for a long time, uh, soaking them. Moving towards them. agriculture because the meat was the king's meat. Yes. Remember? Well, not only that, but just think in primitive times, there's a big storm. Now you, the hunting is gone because the animals have left. So now you've got to go after the animals, but they're gone a long time. Yeah. So now you're without food for days and days. What do you do? Yeah. You start looking for other things. It's, it's kind of like the deer. They, the deer don't want to eat the bark off the tree, but they will when hard times come. Exactly. The resourcefulness that we that really has enabled us to survive all these years. So let's talk a little bit about some of the foods that that have helped us survive and been good to our genomic, con, you know, continuation. That's what, actually exactly. yeah. fermented foods are a foundational compound component of culinary genomics since the gut and its microbiome is the gateway to health. So a finely tuned gut allows us to absorb the nutrients that serve as information to the body and its complex biological processes. Yeah, there's also things that happen when we just chop things up. There's a, there's a compound, uh, uh, sulforaphane. sulforaphane, which is actually the really powerful compound in, in cruciferous vegetables. That's right, and when mm -hmm. you chop cabbage or you bite into Brussels sprouts, you activate this influential gene that has a real dynamic effect on your health. This is the same compound that can be produced by the beneficial bacteria. So this works in unison. This is why cabbage, and when you ferment the cabbage, make it sour and things like that, mm -hmm. are really good for your gut. They feel good. Yeah, and actually, the study of genomics can help undercover, uncover why some people struggle more with their weight than others, and why some people may be likely to suffer from anxiety or other mood disorders, uh, including blood sugar. By, but as we start to understand the nature of food and the environment, through using what we now know, some of the science of genomics and applying some common sense, we can help people eat the foods that really help them to thrive in their particular situation. It's kind yeah. of a new era in food and in medicine. And in health. Yeah. Uh, you see, the author says here, we are at the dawn of a new era in food and also a new era in medicine. Uh -huh. Never before had the kitchen, has the kitchen played a more pivotal role in health. I think probably never before again. Mm -hmm. I think it was to our ancestors, the food was everything. Yeah, it says we have, well, the food and the environment and... Sure, and the medicine yeah, man was right. right there. So we have finally reached a moment where we can empirically trace the evidence and trace the connections between the food and how you choose to prepare it and how that affects your personal biochemistry. And they're now walking hand in hand, medicine and culinary arts, food as medicine, which is what we've been talking about, and yeah. lifestyle as medicine. And I think it's always interesting to think about the process. How did this happen? It's kind of like that samurai story that you told years ago, uh -huh. where the samurai had his uh, meat wrapped into the, uh, the rice and he kept it in his bag. Uh -huh. But he was fighting for so long, the stuff started turning rancid. Right. And this is, with the, it was actually the soybeans, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. The, the soybeans. They made the, nat and, and made the natto, which we now know is the world's most popular um, form of vitamin K2. Yeah. So what they're doing, they made the K2 out of a vegetable or a bean mm -hmm. instead of from the animal. Mm -hmm. So the process made the K2 for us essential because without the K2, you die. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it really is only found in meat. Mm -hmm. except when you ferment things. Exactly. Isn't that, Isn't that so cool? So, you know, she goes on, but let's talk. Let's give you an example of how, a, say, a root vegetable, which root vegetables are coming in, you know, we're into the fall, but a root vegetable slaw ingredient speak to your genes. How does this help your body uh, activate its personal blueprint? For example, apples contain quercetin, which is a bioactive that can activate or turn on the fire hose pathway we call NRF2. Quercetin can also block activation of pro-inflammatory genes, which are the uh, TNF-alpha and the NFKB pathway. Long story short, these are inflammation pathways. And we know that quercetin, which is found in things like onions and garlics and apples, I call it white stuff. 
Mm -hmm. See, queer sardine is usually found in white stuff, the white part of an apple, mm -hmm. you know, the um, onions and so forth. Right. Uh, for example, the addition of arugula, watercress, or baby kale, or bok choy leaves, just prior to serving this vegetable slaw that we're making, um, provides sulforaphane, which we just talked about. Right. Another bioactive which activates the inflammation save your hose. Yeah. Citrus you know? is another nutrient rich in ingredient that provides the core uh, nutrients to su support highly influential biochemical pathways. Mm -hmm. uh, these pathways link with each. Uh, kind of like each. teeth on gears, you know? You know when you, you r roll your bike and the gears connect? Yeah, it close so they, everything together. They close everything together, right. Mm -hmm. yep. And it helps helps to produce the neurotransmitters in the guts that tell the body, hey, do this and do that. Dopamine and mm -hmm, things like that. Mm -hmm, and help for, so a lot of recent research has demonstrated that the citrus peel, mm -hmm. I've shared this with you all, we often use it as zest in recipes as a source of three bioactive compounds that are capable of blocking an enzyme that is integral to the formation of the amyloid plaque associated with Alzheimer's. Yep. We'll continue talking about food as medicine when we get back. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And 
welcome back to the show. Uh, in the chat room, uh, John was talking about, uh, he says, always remember this adage, fact is fiction and fiction is fact. And he says uh, he has his winter beef supply coming from his local rancher, Steve, uh, my... Uh, his steer's name is Stanley. Stanley. <laughs> he named it. I like it. Putting on weight nicely. He saw him in the pasture three weeks ago. That's the way to do it, folks. Yep. You know, get involved with your food and support your local farmers and your local ranchers that are growing healthy food and healthy beef. Yeah, now I want to kind of switch over because I'm going to put all this stuff in the, in the uh, yeah, go back. newsletter. So. We're going to finish up about some of the help, the things. Uh, is food is medicine. It'll be in the newsletter, but this, yeah. is, this, this is my new passion. Well, uh, Posture today is really being compromised by the devices that we're constantly looking Text at. Text neck. In fact, I, you know, a lot of times, do we ever sit around and do nothing anymore? <laughs> I mean, you're always compelled, you know, you're sitting there, you know, you're just enjoying yourself, whatever you're doing, uh, and you're not really reading or anything, you're just uh, kind of chilling out, but no, you go right back to the, because you might be missing something, you're missing nothing. Right. And this, this compulsion is really, really dangerous in a sense. But let's talk about posture, uh, posture because I struggle with it myself, too. I'm very conscious everyone, of it. Everyone does. But today, it seems like everybody does, and no matter how straight you sit up. You know, a lot of all this, I, I like to say that I think much of our, own, our health <clears throat> bills originate between the top of the head and the clavicle or the cervical spine. And when you can get that right and get the neck posture and the shoulders back, you can you breathe better. And there's evidence of longevity, unbelievable. You look at traditional people and the way they walk, you know, carrying water or baskets on their head while they're carrying a baby. It's amazing. So but, I'm, with, I'm thinking that the, reading a book is not natural uh -huh. because it really crinks you, you know. So we're made to... Be the watcher, the seer of things, and, and when you're looking reading, out at, yeah. on the horizon, yeah, watching in a distance yeah. and close. Oh, yeah. we're not going to change that. So let's talk about our posture. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. And uh, you know, what is good posture, and how to get good posture? Well, what is bad posture that can lead to all kinds of issues down the road, resulting in degradation of the spine, which can make us vulnerable and potential to potential injuries, issues with our joint, our balance, mobility, plus our neck, shoulders, and our back. Most of us suffer from poor posture simply because it's a bad habit. And that's what I've learned recently, that many of us just compensate, and we start doing something, and it continues. But, um, you know, the great news is you can improve your posture fairly easily. Simply sit up with your back straight, pull your shoulders back, and relax them down. Your chest should feel open and uh -huh. wide. Your feet should be flat on the floor. Uh -huh. Take a few slow and deep breaths. Sit that way for at least 30 seconds, and then check every so often to make sure you maintain that posture and not mm -hmm. allow your shoulders to hunch back or back down. It's important when I uh, instruct my uh, students to exercise, uh, it's always in front of a mirror, mm -hmm. so you can see the posture. Because your exercise is only good if the posture is correct in that particular exercise. Correct. Each exercise has their own kind of posture. Most of them are related to just good posture, but some of them are a little bit different. I think that um, we, we can use our tech tools to help us. It's one of the things that you can do is pick a distinctive ringer. And when that ringer set some alarms, that reminds you to do a posture check. Yeah, like and that. to take a few deep breaths, and that's what's working for me because then it becomes like a habit or something that you expect. Mm -hmm. And we really, truly can adapt new habits and make big changes. Yeah. I've been working, uh, you know, with chiropractic, with physical therapy after my accident. I want to make sure that after my broken ankle in three spots, basically I disconnected my foot from my leg in the ski accident, that I don't incur other injuries alignment. up, up. Up the, upstream, mm -hmm. that I don't get out of balance, knees or hips, uh, you know, and all of this goes back up to the neck and shoulder and the head. So I'm kind of trying to realign myself top down and down up. Yeah, and I remember my parents, you know, sit up straight, you know, stuff like that. This stuff never seems to work. What my wife does when she walks past me, she just rubs my back a little bit mm -hmm. just to remind me right. to sit up straight, and that's kind of is a nice touch. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no uh, saying, hey, you're doing it wrong. Well. I think that, like you say, many of us have adapted this, and I think the technology today is designed. I, I'm, I mentioned this about even our studio. We're, we're looking down. I, I like to look at eye level. Yeah. You know, raising. Uh, I try to stand at my desk at work and get things at eye level. So, uh, I think there's some exercises that you are going to share, right? Yeah. Let me mm -hmm. bring them up, and these are 12 exercises on health.com. Oops. 
that's not the one. Sometimes you hit the wrong one. Yeah, it's on healthline.com and having, you know, we, we talk about it actually, you look younger and you truly are younger when you have good posture. You're doing great things for your longevity. The ability to breathe and have everything else in alignment is, is super. So, so it can help you develop strength, flexibility, and balance your body. And you'll notice these are uh, along the line of uh, yoga disciplines. Yeah. So yoga invented probably five, maybe longer years ago in the Indian culture. How yeah. many years ago? At least 5,000 years. Oh, at least, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the resting posture strengthens and lengthens your spine. The resting posture is what we're seeing there. Great way to start your day. Great way, we often call this child's pose too, just kind of in a very surrender state of stretching but allowing yourself to just breathe. Yeah. Next one is called a forward fold. Mm -hmm. And this one. Uh, this actually stretches all the leg muscles. Your hamstrings, mm -hmm. your butt muscles. Uh, you're contracting your stomach, mm -hmm. which is really important. Right. So these are very, very important types of uh, exercises. This is the cat cow. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, just putting your muscles downward yeah, you, and then upward. Right, you're contracting and then yeah. extending the, from the abdominal muscles. Mm -hmm. And then they have the standing cat, which mm -hmm. is very similar on your standing kind posture. of roll. You kind of roll more the upper thoracic area, yeah. correct. Yeah. So we want to encourage you guys, especially those of you that are doing trading, watching uh, TFNN.com and you wanna, you're sitting at the desk, take a few moments, uh, pull up some stretching exercises that will help your posture all during the day. Yeah, what do you think open. about, as a trainer, what do you think about some of those devices people are wearing, they put on, I call it like a reverse bra. Yeah, I think they have this uh, that on here. Uh, have uh, you used one yourself? Uh, I've had one on. It feels very strange in the beginning because mm -hmm. it really pulls you tight. But there are some other methods. Mm -hmm. uh, here is the high plank, really important. That's kind of a push-up starting position. It sure is, and the high plank really is just a great exercise for the whole body. Yeah, if you just hold this position, and just keep contracting your uh, abdominal muscles. Even a low muscles. plank. If you can't do a high plank to start, start out with yeah, a low start, plank, right? on your elbows, exactly uh -huh. right. Another one here, down facing dog, a little uh -huh. bit more extreme, but this is very, very important. This is important yoga stuff, that's for sure. For sure. Pigeon pose. That's actually, opposite. pigeon pose really does the hip flexors and the psoas muscles. Yep. And you, you'll be amazed at the emotional release that you can get with pigeon pose. Because yep. that's where we store a lot of Yeah, notice fear. that front leg is crossed mm -hmm. in front. That's the real difficult part mm -hmm. there. This is the spinal rotation where this arm will come around. Uh, maybe it shows on here. Pause. Mm -hmm. no, it's not really playing. But, can you press uh, the arrow there? Uh, maybe. Uh, let's see here. Huh. Doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, it doesn't load. But anyways. Got squeezes, squeezing mm -hmm. your butt. Mm -hmm. You can have somebody else do that. That's fun. Uh, isometric rows. Mm -hmm. So this is where you're going up like this right. and down like this. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a great posture right. check. When you're, when you're rowing your arms yeah. up like this, if you stand against a wall and you put your arms up, you can row them along the wall and really feel uh, a correction. Yeah. So when I got to, we come back, we have some more difficult ones that may be a little bit harder for you to see. We'll be right back. back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride a next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. So, so what is the ultimate exercise? Well, we're going to be finding out uh -huh. because uh, here's a nice little graphic of somebody that's uh, burdened down with a whole bunch of things. But this guy is too, and he's standing up straight. So it's a possibility to uh, get it in check, I think. And a lot of it comes back to, you know, reinforcing the core. The core, if you have a strong core, you're able to hold your posture. This well, one. here's the two. Mm -hmm. Two of them. Core posture, rounded shoulders, slouching head tilted forward, knees bent, pot belly. Mm -hmm. uh, good posture, straight line from your ear to your shoulder mm -hmm. to your hip, a balanced and upright posture. Correct. And another poor posture is you have a forward head and your weak abdominal muscles gives you a sway back. Yeah. And uh, again, that's where we're really fighting. Uh, but our bodies do adapt, but they can also adapt back to a healthier posture. That's the good news. That's right. Now, okay. Show that picture of forward head posture. This is what we're seeing an epidemic of. And I want to make a comment about forward head posture is that many times... It is an attempt to breathe. Many people are doing that because the eyes, look at his eyes, okay? That's a good posture. But as we rotate and mm -hmm. we hump like this, wow. this is because many times people have poor airway. And this is, you know, opening the airway and because you, you are going to keep your eyes even with the horizon. So then what happens is the net cervical spine becomes compressed mm -hmm. and the body is compensating by uh, going forward so we you know we're always just trying to survive that's it but let's survive in a healthier way that that's was a great sure. little video so the first exercise is called the reverse plank which is much harder to do it feels weird in the beginning uh, if you have a little joint problems with your wrists and things like that it's not too pleasant in the beginning mm -hmm. but your body does adapt so it's a it's an important exercise I think people should do this mm -hmm. next, next one is arch up Yes. This one, uh, I don't have a video of it, but it's a simple, whoops. You kind of balance on your core and you arch your feet and your arms up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're actually balancing on your stomach. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're raising your feet and this is not working. Mm -hmm. The next one is the plank while you're looking for it. Uh, roll plank. through. Here you come. There it is, There's the plank. The plank. And this is the uh, modified one that you were talking about earlier. Right. And I think that's crucial. Uh, little successes. You know, maybe you can only do it for 10 seconds, mm -hmm. but the next day you'll be able to do it for 15. That's right. And build up. Yeah. Maybe you'll build up to the point where you listen to a whole song. And here's the and posture plank. belt you were talking about. Yeah. yeah, I've never tried one, but I was thinking about getting one. I never did make a decision. But... Um, I do think if you really, especially if you have a lot of desk time and you tend to slouch, this might be something uh, that would help your mind 
we would help remind you to yeah. make that check. And of course, it's the muscles uh, that really control how you sit. So this uh, idea that uh, our abs always should be contracted. Mm -hmm. we, we're, we are lazy people. We've gotten used to not engaging our core. So mm -hmm. this is a way to help that. And here's the one that I was mentioning right before yes. we did this, the, the wall angles. Wall angels, you know, I mentioned you put your arms up mm -hmm. and you get your head flat on the wall and then you lift the arms up and down. You're making like a yeah, little snow angel. And this will give you angel. a good indication how rounded your back really is because at first you're not really touching the things you're supposed to be touching. And if it's hard to keep your arms yeah. on the wall, then you know you've got to be doing this a little bit more. This is yeah. a real important exercise. This is a text neck, mm -hmm. they call it. I've get rid of the knots. Let's, can, can you play that one? See if you can hit that one. Get rid of the knots. This one, um, it may or may not show it, but this is a, eh, it looks like it's going to be something right. long. Let's see. These guys, I've watched them before. Okay, here mm -hmm. right here. I'm kind of humorous. He's showing the, yeah, he's showing the wall an an angels there. Yeah. Pretend you're doing snow angels, but you're keeping the small of the back is core tight. And starting your day with this while you're brewing your coffee is a great way to kind of get going and and the exercise number seven for text neck i think um is is i'm not exactly sure which one because my picture is not showing up but this exercise helps to prevent bad posture it's easy to do several times during the day you simply stop looking down at your phone <laughs> i mean instead of hold your phone up when you're texting to people yeah. uh see this is a good picture yeah. um you know, instead of scrub, you know, look at this really demonstrates the contortion that we're doing, and we don't even realize we're doing it when we're holding these phones. And we're doing it all the time while we're walking, while we're walking the baby, mm -hmm. walking with your dog, you guys, you're texting. Get rid of this stuff. Uh, a lot of people are going into restaurants now, don't take their phone. Uh, there's a lot of schools. Uh, have you seen these little bags that they have in certain schools where you, the kid comes into school, he has this bag, it has a zip thing, it has a lock on it? And this thing stays locked until the kid leaves school, and the, it's kind of like an REFD tag, and you, boop, you can use it again. And they can't use the phone at all in school. I, I, and then schools are. Doing I personally this. don't think schools should have Wi-Fi. No, and I think probably I think they should if, be you're going, if you're going to a movie theater, things like this, we take our phones everywhere. It's time to leave them alone. We don't need them. Uh, how? I mean, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, we all had phones. We all didn't have a long line with us. Carrying yeah. a phone. We have to disconnect to reconnect. Yeah, we really, should. Do. We really we do, really do guys. The thing I was thinking about with posture is get into some routines of doing a yoga class on a regular basis, mm -hmm. uh, doing some type of stretching classes, get into a martial arts, do some boxing, do some stepping. Any type of exercise on a regular basis with some other people can really help you get not only social, but correct these postures that we have. Use it or lose it. If we don't move and get the flexibility and do these stretches, then we're not going to have that mobility. Right. And I think that's one of the most painful things to see as people get older, is to see them in pain and not able to do these things, whereas perhaps keeping uh, active and flexible could be one of the best things you do for your posture and your overall health. Yeah, so we have two uh, two different types of exercises that we're going to put in the next newsletter. Mm -hmm. One is a fairly easy starting point. These ones are a little bit more difficult. I think all of them can be attained in a, a few months of practice. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. Very important. And there's another thing that we normally can do to help change our posture, and that's walking, our right. natural ability. Uh, so, and, and that's actually really an interesting article that we, you put in here. Are humans actually designed to walk and not run? Let's think about that. Uh, I can take some personal experience with this. Okay. You know, since my injury this, this past winter, snow skiing and disconnecting my foot from my leg, I have not yet run. Okay? I mean, it's been six months. I'm walking. You would, you would not really even notice that anything has happened. And I can do a quick little jog, but I haven't gone running. And I, I actually thought, well, maybe that's not necessary. And then here's this article. Maybe it's not necessary that I have to run fast again. I mean, I certainly would like to be able to, you know. Well, certainly we use running to escape predators and probably to chase right. down things. I think running is very important. But remember, it was uh, maybe a couple of years ago, we talked about that in the 1700s, our walking changed. We normally would land midfoot. 
Mm -hmm. And because now we are in cities mm -hmm. and we start putting more protection, and this is about the time in the 16, 1700s when people started using more protection, they started using a harder sole on the bottom, right. which uh, the shape of their foot. Before it was always kind of a loose like moccasin. A, like a moccasin shape, yeah, right. So now it started being a hard thing that enveloped the shoe. And, and that's when the high heels came along. You see those Victor or those yeah, women and the that was Renaissance around, course, women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what happened was now we're uh, in a city and we're protected and no longer are we very, very conscious of our surroundings. We're safe. Mm -hmm. And now we heel strike where before we didn't. And Isn't that's that how funny it changed. how these little things change the way we are? We'll be right back. Course. Yeah, we'll be right back after this break. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Think or Swim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So what I was talking about in the beginning was bef the bef time before shoes, our feet were... Uh, we used our feet different. Yeah, when if you're going through grass, let's say, with bare feet, uh, if you're walking the normal human uh, way you're supposed to do it, is you contract your abs, your, your, be uh, your knees are slightly bent, and then you're just grooving through the grass, but your toes are feeling where your feet should go. 
and then you step into it. So you actually kind of use the pad yeah, right you, below your, your toes. Yeah, your toes are kind of the feelers out there. Uh -huh. If there's anything in the way, then you, you don't hit that spot. Right, right. Uh, so it's, it became casual, became the casual human being with the walls surrounding it. Now we don't have to pay attention to our surroundings. We start heel striking. So uh -huh. that's the change that took place. And Nike, when he invented his running shoe, thought that since we heel strike walking, we should also heel strike running. One of the biggest mistakes ever made. We have a whole generation of people heel striking while running, which affects wow. the knees and the hips, and you see the result. A lot of people have heel and hip problems, even just from walking, wow. but from running I even more so. I didn't know that so. about Nike. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so Dr. Nobody, Nike. So what about from a tennis shoe standpoint, are any of them designed for better striking? Uh, no, the tennis I don't wear shoes, Nikes. Yeah, I don't. The, the, the running shoes are tilted up in about an inch, some mm -hmm. three quarters, some mm -hmm. different. Now you have the bare running shoes, which don't have anything at all, mm -hmm. and then you have to start over kind of from scratch because your muscles have really been shortened. Yeah. Same problem women have with high heels. Correct. Those muscles get shorter. They do get shorter. And now shorter. you don't have the flexibility that you used to have. So uh, we've compromised our way of walking quite a bit with shoes and things like that, but we can get this back. Yeah. There's a lot of chi running and chi walking, but I think Homo erectus and the, and the modern humans are the walking machines. And, and let's get back to the great exercise that is walking, because in studies of trained athletes in which researchers set out to see how humans move, no matter which way a runner landed on their feet, whether it be heels, mid, ball, toes, running was not fuel efficient. And efficiency in human movement is important. Yeah. And just as it is in the transport world, and the, and the more fuel efficient a car is, the further it can travel, and the same applies to a person. An efficient human machine needs less energy to cover the same amount of space. That's it. So That's hey, show. get out there and walk. That's right. We'll see, see you in the neighborhood. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.